Yo, what is good, Deb guys? Welcome back. In this video, we want to set up the base functionality for interacting with our pickup objects that we've created. So we set up where to spawn, when to spawn, and what to spawn. Now we want to set up what happens when the character actually interacts with these objects in the world once they are spawned. So go ahead and jump into your pickup base class because every pickup at its core will have functionality for being interacted with and we'll extend that functionality into the child classes. So jump into the base class and underneath the public section here, because we want this function to be called from any class that has a reference to this class. And uh, we're going to make a U function. And this is going to be a blueprint native event. And if you hover over this in Rider, it'll let you know what a blueprint native event basically does for you. It says this function is designed to be overwritten by a blueprint, but it also has a default native implementation. And here it even tells you that it declares an additional function named the same as the main function with underscore implementation added to the end, which is where the code should be written, which is the C++ code. This auto-generated code will call the implementation function or method if no blueprint override is found. So if we don't override this in blueprint, it will call. So the, for example, if we call this function in blueprint and there is no actual override to the function, it'll just call the implementation. But if we override this function in blueprint and call this function, it'll call the implementation and the override logic. So we're going to call this function void on pickup collected. And this is the function that will fire once we actually interact with the object in the world. Collected. And we have to generate an implementation. So let me go ahead and. Well, yeah. OK, there we go. Uh, I don't know why it's doing that. So, so show content actions and I want to here we go G generate implementation so as you can see just like it told us it'll create a on pickup collected with underscore implementation at the end and all we're going to do here is write a debug log and in you, Unreal, uh, the debug logs are a little bit different. They are ha they have a little bit more added to them so that you can kind of organize them and have some some clarity inside your console when you're working with logs. But first, we want to go ahead and de declare a const f string, and the f string is just a string uh, uh, or a struct of characters that is a string. And we're going to call this our debug string. And we're going to set this equal to the name of this object here. And then with our log, which in I know you're used to typing debug dot log inside of Unity, but in Unreal, the log syntax is UE underscore log. And here it takes a few arguments. It takes a category name, which basically organizes this into separate categories inside of your console, which will allow you to filter out things by category. So if you had your own custom category, you could filter out that category and only see the, the logs that you created. But we're going to put this in the log temp category. And the verbosity just means what color this is going to show inside of the console. So a, a, a simple log is going to show gray. A warning will show yellow and an error will show red. And this just lets you know how important or how extreme the log is or the error is. We're just going to put this in warning so that we can see it in yellow. And last but not least, we need to format some text for this to send back to us in the log. So we create a text macro and then we go ahead and form a, uh, a string here. And we're just gonna say, we have picked up colon 
and then to format this variable into this text macro we have to type in this shorthand symbol here which is a percent sign s and this basically tells this macro that hey we're looking for a string variable somewhere outside of this macro and this could be formatted to a flow or to a integer and we're just going to go to keep it encapsulated so we focus on what we're working on but as you write more debug logs or ue logs you'll run into more of these shorthands and you'll start understanding them a little bit easier so here to pass in the variable we have to write a comma and then go ahead and pass in our debug string now if you were to compile this you get a weird error and the error will say something and i'll go ahead and compile it so we can see the error that way you know what you're looking for and i should mention that sometimes these compile times will take long especially if you're using unreal engine 5 and rider is still not production ready with a, a production ready version of unreal engine 5 because it will have to compile the entire Rider plugin as well as your code sometimes. But here is the error that you'll see. It's a log macros .h, which is basically the header file for all the logs. And it'll say invalid arguments passed to this uh, log here. And it's saying a non-portable class of f string as an argument to a veridic function. And uh, that just means that we gave it something that it doesn't know is a string yet because since we set this as a string in memory uh the memory knows that it's a string but this macro doesn't have any connection to the memory to know that it's a string so we have to dereference this from the memory so that it can say okay that is a string that we're passing in and it's not just some weird zeros and ones uh, so this asterisk is the dereference symbol. It dereferences something from memory and this will compile correctly. And there you go. So that's all we want to do for the base functionality. So let's go ahead and go to the battery pickup and we want to override the functionality for this child class. And the way to do that is just to type in a virtual void and on pickup collected implementation override. And this will allow us to override the implementation of the, of the uh, parent class and give it our own functionality inside the child class. So go ahead and generate an implementation of that. And since it has base functionality, we wanna go ahead and call super and pass in the base method. This is how you call base functionality for overridden function in Unreal, uh, you call super. And the thing that we want to do in the battery is just destroy it. So that is the functionality that we want to happen inside of the battery pickup. So it'll call the base class, which will tell us what we've picked up. And then this child class will destroy itself. And that is pretty much all the functionality we want to write for now for the pickup. So we can go ahead and close those classes. And now go ahead and pop open your uh, battery collector character .h file and open up the CPP file as well. We're going to have to dive in there. And this is a class we haven't opened yet. Uh, and you'll see there's a lot of functions already implemented here. You can take a look at them to kind of get an idea of how Unreal writes its characters and try to understand um, some of the functionality that goes into a character class. And this is a very base functionality. It has something set up for input. It has a camera, a, a, a spring arm, and this just shows you how to set up a character basically. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new component and Unreal is a very component based. You can do a lot of things with component classes uh, and you can attach uh, a, com uh, a plethora of components to a character class or to an actor class that will give it different functionality. 
And the component that we want to attach to this uh, character class is a sphere component. This will act as a, a collider for when we interact with the objects in the world. This will be the collider that interacts with them. And the syntax for that is a class because we're forward declaring it. And it's a use sphere component. And if you control click, just to make sure that it's a valid class, you see it derives from a shape component. Um, that'll let you know that you typed in the right thing. You can also do this here where you just type in use sphere component. Uh oh, we're getting nothing in IntelliSense. Where you type in use sphere component and it'll let you know, okay, this is the, the correct name for it and it's declared in this header. But if you press enter on this, it'll declare it in this header file. And you want to minimize how many headers you have in your header file or how many includes you have in your header file. So that's why we forward declare some of these component and it's a pointer and we're going to call this our collision sphere. And you'll see this U property macro looks different from anything we typed. Um, it is an extra accessor right here that, that the meta and it says allow private access equals true. And this is just because anything under generated body is automatically classified as private so that uh, you won't actually be able to see this component in the editor unless you give it this allow private access here, uh, this meta value. So I'm gonna change this category to collision. And with that created, since it is private, we want to have a getter for it that we could uh, call in any other class. And here it, it gives you a, a demonstration of how to create a getter class or getter function call. And it's this force in line and it returns whatever class you're trying to get and you use a, a, a smart name for it and it just returns the uh, component that you created here. So we're just going to copy this and the comment and we're going to paste it down here and this is going to return our collision, our sphere collider. And this is actually going to return the use sphere component. And we're going to call this get sphere collision. And this is going to return our sphere collider or our collision sphere. That's what we call it. And basically, whenever we call this function, it'll just return this collision sphere for us since it's private. And let's go ahead and instantiate this into our character. So come here to your character CPP and in the constructor, we want to go ahead and instantiate this collision sphere. So in order to do that, you have to create the default sub object and it's going to be a use sphere component. Now you will have to include this up here. You have to include components slash sphere component dot H. Uh, so that you could access the function calls inside of this component. And this is going to be called our sphere collider. And then let's go ahead and attach this to the root component. So we do that by calling collision sphere dot setup attachment. And uh, here we're going to attach it to the root component. And also we want to go ahead and set the spheres radius so we can set the sphere radius. And this is a function call that is a part of this class where it sets the sphere radius to a, a value that we give it. And we're just going to feed it 200 uh, unreal units. 
I'm going to go ahead and compile that. Make sure that we don't get any errors. And we got a clean compile. So that's pretty much all I wanted to do and set up in this video. Uh, in the next video, we're going to actually set up the functionality for when this sphere collider actually overlaps one of those batteries in the world. And we're going to have it call that function that we created inside of the pickup class, the on pickup collective function. And then we're going to see our hard work at work inside the editor. So if you're ready for that, go ahead and join me in the next video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.